What's up guys? We are getting ready for North Dakota. We leave in T minus 24 hours. You can see we got uh, decoys out the wazoo. Kegs just showed up with the travel trailer. You ready to haul this thing cross country? We did it once last year, so let's do it again. <laughs> That's why I like to hear some, some enthusiasm. By uh, Indiana, we're probably not going to sound so enthusiastic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's Chicago. It's Chicago will be where the suck starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So we're going to get this thing loaded up and uh, get ready to uh, haul this thing back and get ready to roll tomorrow. All right, not sure what else we could fit in here. we got to fit Travis's gear in here still, and he packs like a woman, so we'll see how that goes. But What is this, Travis? Are we leaving you there? Did you decide to move or what? What's, what's, what's the game plan here? You know, I'm organized, bro. I'm organized. <laughs> what's up, guys? We are officially on the road. We're in uh, Gloucester, Virginia here, cruising up the highway, and uh, we are heading to North Dakota. You got it. One straight shot, cannonball run, Gloucester to North Dakota, nothing but gas and bathroom breaks. Got kegs with me. Got Travi in the back. We're going to go out here and uh, show you guys how to freelance hunt North Dakota. So there's all kinds of guide services you can pay to go out there, uh, stay on their private property, hunt that, have a guy with, out, with you or without you out there. Um, but the best way to do this and experience this, and the, the, my, my opinion, the only way to do this is to uh, go do it yourself. There's tons of public land out here. We're going to show you how to read maps, how to figure out what's public, what's not, make sure you're not breaking any laws, all that good stuff show you how to go out here and have some really successful hunting and some of the best waterfowl hunting in america so stick around it should be a good time we're going to take you all the way across country all right we are passing through the allegheny mountains and by through we are literally going through the allegheny mountains look at these guys look at these guys <laughs> oh no travis is alive we are uh 10 hours and 45 minutes from our destination of Fargo. It's 5.06 in the morning. We're somewhere in Indiana. No clue where. All right, that's the Great Lakes out there. We're rolling up into Chicago. Little known fact, Chicago actually has a lot in common with Richmond. They both look amazing in your rear view. <laughs> All right, there it is, guys. Welcome to North Dakota. We did time. We made it. I owe Keegan a drink, man. He made it in 24 hours flat. Man. All right, I thought he couldn't do it in under 26, so it uh, looks like I owe him some beverages. We did it. We're here. We're going to swing by Shields, which is a uh, big uh, bait, tackle, uh, hunting supplies, sporting goods, like toys you name it they got everything so we're gonna swing in there and uh pick up a little bit of supplies while we're here see what they got this place got ferris wheel inside of it check that out airplane ferris wheel One important reason to stop at Shields or one of the local uh, hunting goods stores is to get yourself a plots book. These things are crucial and they will show you every piece of public land for the entire state. So you know where you're going, you know what's posted, what's, what's public, what's not, and uh, it'll help you really scout for uh, where you're looking for ducks. It's a must. Make sure you stop and get one of these or download the app from uh, Department of Gaming and the Fisheries for North Dakota. A little extra detail on this plots book because this thing is super important. The whole state, if you look at the back of the book, is broke down into map pages. Every page is color coded based off of what kind of public land it is that you can hunt. This book is very crucial if you're going to go out there and freelance hunt because it really gives you a lot of great areas to hunt. What you want to pay attention to is if you look like this, the solid line roads or lines are... Pretty good hard surface gravel roads 
anywhere there's a dotted line is questionable at best. So be cautious. Some of those you can get down, you can't turn around, could be flooded out. They're not maintained in the winter. So keep that in mind, but definitely get yourself a plots book or download the app from the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. It is 36 degrees out. Oh my gosh, I'm not used to this uh, temperature yet. A little early in the year for it. We stayed at the uh, Indum, in Wyndham uh, Wingate Suites last night. Getting a continental breakfast this morning. We're gonna head out and try to find some birds, do some scouting today, and check into our next hotel, which is right next to the house we're staying in all week. Uh, get us close to home base, get this trailer dropped off, get our stuff organized, because it's a giant wreck from bouncing around the back of a truck for 1,300 miles. So we're gonna get out there and do this as soon as Travis can get done taking his four hour shower. Yeah. All right, guys, we are uh, we're loaded up finally. It's uh, 9.30 and uh, got the plots book out. And we're gonna start scouting our way across our uh, beautiful state of North Dakota here. So it's really key to get out there and do a lot of scouting. I prefer to scout in one day real heavily and that way at least you got a couple ideas going into the next couple days. Some days you end up hunting longer than you think and uh, you ain't got a place to go the next day unless you really took that time to scout. So get out there, look around, find that land. Uh, take, a, take a walk sometimes too, man. A lot of the times, People will just drive around and look for ducks. Uh, there's a lot of accessible water that's just over a hilltop. If you put in that little bit of extra work, you're uh, bound to find some birds that the lazier people uh, did not find. So that's something to keep in mind when you're out here. Travi tip number so, two. Travi tip number two. Another tip. Um, don't waste your time sitting in one spot, only seeing one or two ducks every few minutes, you know, every 30 minutes, and you're seeing ducks go to another place. Pick up and go see what's going on. It might work out for the whole week. That happened to us last year. That's right, so uh, if you drive by a pond and you're used to hunting somewhere like say Virginia and seeing 20 or 30 birds and you're like, man, we're on the money. You're not on the money in North Dakota. Um, some of these spots that you'll scout out may have 200 mallards sitting on them at one time. So it's definitely good to get out there like Travis said and uh, really just, if, if you're having a boring hunt in the morning, you're shooting one or two ducks. You know, scratch out a couple while you're sitting there and then don't stay there all day. Pack up, watch the birds, figure out where they're going and uh, set up on them. Or if not, wait till the next morning and set up on them and be waiting for them. This is what we're here for guys. Look at that flock of geese. Holy cow. That is one flock of geese. Bunch of ducks in the mix. There must be 200 geese in that flock. Bunch landing out in the field out there. All right, so it's 434. We're on the way from our hotel to uh, some of the places we scouted yesterday. We can't even believe I'm saying this. Almost smoked a giant cow standing in the middle of the road. Busy, busy highway. Giant black cow standing smack in the middle of the road. And uh, all black. All we saw were eyeballs staring at us and Keegan made the quick move and uh, somehow averted instant death. So, <laughs> tip number 1047, watch out for cows in the middle of the road in the middle of the night. Layout blinds are crucial for this. Can you see pretty well? Pretty good. Put the light on it. So we're using layout blinds today because there is nothing on this shoreline here. It is wide open. Uh, you'll see it in daylight, but so we brought the layout blinds and we're just gonna put these things together. Post up on the shoreline, we got a little spread of geese off to the right over here. Some mallards, some uh, pintails and some teal. And we saw a bunch of ducks in here yesterday so we think they're gonna come in here. We're gonna give it a shot, see what happens. Stick around, stay tuned. kept wanting to land out in the middle they just would not commit but uh we managed to knock down a uh widgeon a bluebill i'm sorry a widgeon a ringneck and four gadwalls and a mallard so not a bad morning 
little spread here. Had a couple of keys come in, it almost committed, just wouldn't do it. Not a bad little shoot for the morning though. All right, we're back at the crib. Tough day of hunting today. It's 72 degrees in uh, October here in uh, North Dakota. Last year, we were being chased out of here by a snowstorm around this time. So we got uh, we got a widgeon. We got another widgeon over here. We got two widgeons, four gadwalls, mallard, a uh, ringneck. And we lost a couple birds on the on the commute, so we're down down two birds. But slow start to the day, Travis. What you got for us? Not seeing the numbers yet this year that we're uh, used to, but um, we got a cold front coming in. Uh, Wednesday morning is supposed to be 25 degrees. Um, even if it's a little too early to bring birds down, uh, I think it's going to keep the birds moving. Um, so we might see a little bit more action that way. Um, and hopefully this morning we worked out all the kinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I say we worked out some kinks this morning. Uh, we had all kinds of fun stuff, man. We had birds decoying when uh, we weren't paying attention. And the two times we got out of the blind to just stretch our legs for a minute was when a couple geese came in. So it happens. That's hunting. Uh, we're by all no means some pros here. We're just uh, some, some guys having a good time out here. But there you go. Good little bag of birds for, for a morning hunt. And uh, that's it. That's it for the first morning. We're gonna uh, see if we can do a little better tomorrow. So we did not run the action cams today, so we're a little light on action on the first episode here, but uh, starting tomorrow, we're gonna have two, uh, two shot cams running, so you should get some pretty good shots. Stick around. Uh-oh. Somebody got a little tippy. That buddy went to dump it, and that thing just rolled. 